what a night I'd had. My gray matter was playing hard to get with the details, but if the sign was any indication, then it was probably the same thing that had happened the last 117 times I'd gotten drunk with circus people. I didn't have to check my wallet to know they'd left it emptier than the picture frame Pamela Anderson bought to hold her college degree. It was shaping up to be one of those months, so I aimed to find myself a bottle and ride out the storm. There we go. I inaugurate an inducement to the court that ad seditious arrestation of my client constitutes a grievous scurrility until his just entitlement. Given that the prosecutor is unable to adduce collateral attestment, I further request the court that this affair be classified a mistrial and that all injunctions against my client be rescinded and annulled. God, I hate this guy. Well, the prosecution hasn't shown me anything today that would dissuade me from supporting your motion. Therefore, the court has no choice but to grant the dismissal of charges. Mr. Rabella, despite what some may consider the interest of justice, you are now a free man. <laughs> hey, thanks, Barry. No, I mean, uh, your honor. Yeah, it's not like I don't owe you a hundred favors. <laughs> Dismiss. <laughs> well, you see, Mr. Morier, told you I was an innocent man. Someone got to Van Vanderven and made him change his story. Maybe you just got tired of lying. So what's next for you, Tommy? Back to your old ways? First things first. Got to see a man about a vasectomy. And then I'm going home to sleep in my own bed. Alone? Up yours, Du Maurier. I'm plenty rich enough to get a woman to go to bed with me. I meant your wife. Debbie's not the kind of woman to just sit back while you walk free and she rots in a cell. Meaning? Meaning, whoever got to Van Vandervan got to her, too. <laughs> you know, you really are a simple woman, like that uh, Forrest Gump guy, only with breasts. Oh, I, I assume you're still in touch with the Swede, or uh, Serge, as you like to call him. Will you tell him? Tommy has no hard feelings against him double-crossing. In fact, I'm looking forward to burying the hatchet. I told you it would work. I just wish I could be there to see the look on her face when she opens the envelope. Divorce? You bastard, Tommy. I want to see my lawyer! Right now! I ain't open for business, pal. Neither is my rosebud, sunshine, so why don't you lay off with the sweet talk and give me nine rum and coke? Uh, it ain't legal for me to serve you before 
Well, it ain't legal for me to punch the ugly off your face. But that don't mean I ain't not gonna do it if you don't make smart with the booze. I only got enough rum for six drinks. Well, then I guess you better find another bottle before I get that far into my drinking. Otherwise, my foot is gonna be doing a jig with your scrotum. Sheesh. Sometimes you just gotta speak their language. If life had taught me anything, it was that bartenders were a lot like kittens. Neither one of them can take a punch. Good morning. I wouldn't know. You must be the guy taking Vinny's spot. Well, only if Vinny was planning on spending the next 14 hours sitting here getting tanked. No, nah, no, nah, he's just some guy looking to take the edge off. Oh, my apologies, then. Vinny's guy called, and he ain't gonna make it. Ah, we can't play without a fourth. Hey, mister, you uh, ever play any cards? Do I play cards? Does my parole officer feel I'm a high risk to reoffend? I don't know. Well, maybe it's best we keep it that way, flyboy. We got a small room set up out back, uh, nothing too fancy, just a place where some friends can uh, uh, gather together for some cards, a few drinks, uh, make small talk, that kind of thing. We're kind of over a barrel trying to find a fourth, so how's about you sitting in? How's about you say please when you ask me a question, you hideous looking prick? <laughs> Okay. Would you, uh, please sit with us at our game of cards? Why not? I got some time to kill anyway. Besides, and don't take this the wrong way, but you three morons ain't exactly the brightest pack of fellas I've seen. The way old Butchie's got it squared, I'm looking at a pretty sweet payday. You're not a very congenial man, are you? Well, that depends. On what? On what congenial means. Lead the way, skirt and blouse. Bring the rest of my booze to the back room. Stick six gin and tonics and a jug of draft on the tab. You may as well forget about your tip right now. You blew that coming on to me. You're either the bravest guy I've ever met or the stupidest. What I am is a man no longer worried about dying. Why? Because you gave Tommy Rubella his walking papers and fingered Debbie Hitler? I didn't finger Hitler. Somebody fingered Hitler. I'm no fingerer. You really were that deeply involved in Tommy and Debbie's operation? Through no choice of my own, yes. You have to understand, I was simply a, a quiet, law-abiding museum curator until I got caught up in their business dealings by my ex-wife's double life. I never thought in a million years I'd be fingering anyone. Life's like that. Sometimes you find yourself fingering someone you never thought you'd even talk to, let alone finger. Anyway, that's quite a story you're sitting on. You should write it down in a series of sentences and paragraphs that can be assembled into what them academic types call a book. tell-all book about rubella and Hitler. You really think there'd be much of a market for something like that? Oh yeah, the public loves that kind of thing. You'd make a mint. Then again, you'd want to, because the minute it hit the shelves, well, they'd both be looking to kill you. Well, to kill me, they'd have to find me first. For that kind of money, I have a feeling I could find some quiet corner of the world to live out my days in opulent prosperity. Something to think about, I suppose. Oh, I'll think about it. I'll think about it all the way to the bank. 
They were trying to give me the bum's rush and force me into a snap decision, but I wasn't biting. These guys were about to learn that old Butchie doesn't do anything quickly except ejaculate. Well, hopefully they weren't going to learn that. But I was drinking and stranger things had happened. Well, Mr. Patterson? I'm still thinking. It's been almost two hours. This is ridiculous. Not half as ridiculous as that dead rodent you're trying to pass off as a hairpiece. I can assure you that this is my real hair. Well, maybe you should think about getting a mirror. Well, just a minute. Shut up. I'll see your 7,000. And I'll raise you eight dollars. Eight dollars. What the hell kind of bet is that? If you don't got the stones to play with the big boys, why don't you pack up your purse and head back to Sissy Town? Fine. I call. I call. <laughs> Read them and weep, pricks. Eight tens and two aces. Yeah, maybe you should lay off the booze a little. You're only supposed to see one of everything. I figure God give you two eyes for a reason, Marcel. I trust his judgment a whole lot more than I trust any of you freaks. Why don't you shut up and deal the cards? For my good friend, Mr. Fisty Fist makes love to your face. So, anyway. Hey, John, how's your brother doing? Uh, they got a machine running his kidney until they can find a donor. <laughs> That's terrible. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we talk about me? At least that way the conversation will be interesting. Three sevens. Two pairs, tens and nines. <laughs> Looks like Butchie's gonna get to try that thing with the prostitutes he's always wanted to do. Royal flush. Read them and weep, losers. So whose deal is it? Uh, I'm out. You guys broke me. Yeah, I guess that's it. Looks like it's been your lucky day, Mr. Patterson. $55,000 of our hard-earned money. We can't quit now. You guys still got money, and I want it. It's no fun without a fourth. Tell you what, John, if that's your real name. How'd you like a job working for me? Doing what? Well, that's not important. How'd you like to make some money right now so that you can stay in the game? Who knows, you might get lucky and win all your money back. Although I wouldn't bank on it. From what I've seen, you are to poker what Galileo was to lap dancing. Yeah, yeah, fine. There's a C note. Go get me 16 vodka tonics and a ham sandwich. Well, it looks like we got a little R&R &R here, fellas. I'm gonna go hit the crapper and make room for my transfusion. Nobody cool hand my cabbage when I'm gone or you'll be in line for some chin music. And my boy Friday pick that up when he gets back. Don't stiff me on the poor fruitcake. Got all day. Whose deal is it? It's your deal. 
Ten bucks, John. Deal the cards for me. What? Call the game before we look at our cards. Nothing wild. No draws. You can't play nothing wild. Didn't think that moron was ever gonna shut up. Now, unless you schmoes wanna join your friend in La La Land, shut your pie holes and ante up. So we're just gonna bet with what we were dealt. That's right, party boy. Just wanna get the rules straight. Five hundred. He's in. Can I get an advance on my pay, Mr. Patterson? Fine. But you're going to be real ashamed of yourself after what I make you do for that kind of scratch. I'll see your five hundred. And I'll raise you fifty-four thousand five hundred dollars. I call. Butch. Go to hell, prick. Looks like it's just you and me, Marcel. Looks like it, friend. I ain't no friend of yours, Azalea. So what say we get out to scale and see who's got the heaviest testicles? I've got a nine. Royal flush. Nice job of shuffling, you stupid prick. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and deal the cards. Oh, I'd love to, but it appears you're out of money. Maybe I've got something a whole lot better than money. So Tommy and Jasmine are back in business. They're the ones who paid off Van Vanderman. I can't imagine Vance being too happy about the woman he loves leaving him for Tommy. Meaning? We make him a better offer. One that allows him to get out from underneath Tommy's thumb and get back at his ex-wife. We don't have the kind of money Tommy has. We can't match what he's offering. There are some things more precious than money. Meaning? Quit saying that! His life? I'm sure Jasmine and Tommy threatened him, but I'm also sure he is decidedly more afraid of me than he is of those two. You do have a reputation. Get to Vance. Before he leaves town, tell him to stay in contact with Jasmine and Tommy like it's business as usual. And then he can report back to us about what they're up to. What if he doesn't want to play ball? Then show him these pictures of what I did to those two beauticians in Edmonton. Tell him he'll get it much worse unless he cooperates. Would <coughs> you call yourself an assassin? <laughs> hey, thanks for the cord. We'll get it back to you soon. Uh, you, you can keep it. Uh, I don't want it back. Can I get you something? What was that all about? I don't know. Give me another round, Buttercup. Oh, hey, Blanche, how's it going? Oh, my God, Butch, what happened to you? I bluffed and they called me on it. Drop a dime to the medics, pronto. Hey, I had no idea what was going on back there. Uh, those guys must have come in the back way. I mean, call an ambulance, now. 
Were you shot or stabbed? Yeah, I run out of greenback, so I bet my kidney. Word of advice, don't pay to gamble with a major organ on the line. I never had that prick already figured for a surgeon. Hey, how's that round coming, arsehole? Hey, doll. That prick ever bring me the rest of my drinks? You almost died, Butch. So what? It ain't the first time I stared death in the face and he blinked first. So what are you doing anyway? I need your help. Vance Van Vandervan recanted his story and cleared Tommy. Tommy's out now and keeping time with Jasmine. I figure Vance is somewhere in the background. I need your help to find out what's going on and who's doing what to who and with who. Well, I got bills to pay, baby. I don't work for free. What do you want? I wouldn't mind a new kidney. <laughs> How does 500 bucks make a girl spot feel? Deal. I'm just gonna roll over and catch some Z's. You'll be in my dreams, Blanche. I guess that makes us even. Excuse me.